that prayer. Let us appreciate the Lord once again. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we thank God because he's a God of the living. He's not a God of the dead. We thank God because he's a God who changes times and seasons. In the book of Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 3, Habakkuk the prophet prayed and said, Oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of the year. Remember, today we are in the middle of the, the year 2021. Praise the Lord. So when I looked uh, at, uh, at the meaning of uh, revive, the Bible says, uh, the, according to a dictionary Oxford, it says that uh, revive, to revive simply means to restore to life. Restore to life. Revive. Restore to life. And when you restore to life, you are dealing with resurrection. And resurrection simply means the act of rising from the dead. A revival. Praise the Lord. So our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, left all the glory from heaven. He came into this world of suffering. He died for us and he rose from the dead. Praise the Lord. So we are preaching Christ crucified. We are preaching about Christ who has risen from the dead. Therefore, we cannot talk about uh, resurrection without passing through the process of death. Praise the Lord. That's why Paul says in the book, book of uh, Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. We need to know this Jesus, this crucified Jesus, our risen and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We need to know him and to know the power of his resurrection. When you look from the book of, uh, of, of Psalm 50, uh, 49 verse uh, 15, the Bible says, can you read that one? Yes. But as for me, God will redeem my life. He will snatch from the power of death. Can you get, get, get me a NLT version? Okay. Give me a King James. Yes. But God will redeem my soul from the of the grave, for he shall receive me. You know, when somebody dies, he ends his journey into the grave. That's why when somebody dies, they say this is his last journey. His last journey because they are taking him to the grave. Now, once somebody is placed in the grave, the Bible says that God will redeem me from the power of the grave. There is some power. That's why when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, death could not hold him in the grave. Praise the Lord. Death did not have any power. It lost its, its power. Why? Because Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I'm life. Praise the Lord. So Jesus Christ rose from the dead because death lost its power. This morning, this afternoon, death is going to lose its power in somebody's house, in somebody's life, in somebody's business. In the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. Because in the book of uh, John chapter 11, we are going to read a story of someone called Lazarus. Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. Lazarus was eating with Jesus. But one day, Lazarus Fell, fell, uh, fell sick. The Bible says that Martha and Mary, his, uh, his sisters, sent somebody to meet Jesus and tell Jesus, the one whom you love is sick. From the book of, uh, uh, of John chapter 11. Yes. The Bible says clearly that he was sick. He fell sick. He became weaker and weaker. The level of sickness was, was increasing or the level of pain was increasing. Therefore, he died. Then, after four days, Jesus decided to go to 
meet Martha and Mary. Mary decided to be uh, to, to stay at home, to stay inside the house, but Martha went to meet Jesus outside. When she went to meet Jesus, and she was very bitter, she told Jesus, if you are here, my brother could not have died. If you are here, my brother could not have died. Maybe you are here also blaming Jesus. If you are here, I could not have lost my job. If you are here, uh, I could not have lost my business. If you are here, Lord, I've done all these things. See, I have lost this, I've lost that. Praise the Lord. But Jesus told Martha, your brother shall rise again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then she answered, I believe so, but in the last day, he shall resurrect. Jesus told Mary, verse 22 now. Jesus is saying, let us read together. 22. But even now that God will give you whatever you ask, 23. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Next. Yes, Martha said, when everyone else rises on the resurrection day. Next one, 25th. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Praise the Lord. Jesus is introducing himself to her as the resurrection and the life. When things have gone down, when there is no hope for you, you don't know how you will pay your bills, you don't know how the situation will come up again, Jesus comes and tells you that he is the resurrection. Because everybody in this life makes commitment to do something based on what he or she is doing as an activity. Praise the Lord. You are doing some activities, you commit yourself, you will pay school fees. You are doing some businesses, you commit yourself that you will do this. But if that business fails, and you still have commitment, and now you cannot honor your commitment, the word of God says, this morning, Jesus is saying, he is the resurrection and the life. Praise the Lord. He is the resurrection. I remember some time back I had a dream. In that dream, I saw a man of God telling me, Mamba, come, I would like to pray for such and such of your project. I told him in the dream it is too late. In the dream, when I woke up, I repented. Praise the Lord. Why? Because Jesus is the resurrection. It, is, it has never been too late for you. Praise the Lord. Maybe you, are look, you, 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 you trusted God to get married. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You trusted God to get married. And somebody is looking at you. And the story you hear, people say it is too late. This one will never get married. This one, it will never happen. Let me tell you, it is not too late. Praise the Lord. It is not too late. Martha was telling Jesus if you are here because she saw that it was too late. It was too late, but it has never been too late for our God. Praise the Lord. God will make a way where there seems to be no way for that man to appear. Praise the Lord. When you look from the Bible, when Jesus shouted, Lazarus, Lazarus come forth. Lazarus jumped out of the power of the grave. He jumped out of the grave because the voice of Jesus has the power that nullifies the power of the grave. Praise the Lord. That's why when we read in the book of Psalm 49 verse 15, the Bible says, God shall free me. God shall save me from the power of the grave. Praise the Lord. Uh, last time, uh, Pastor James was talking about talents. Talents can be stolen. Even a marriage can be stolen and be buried. Praise the Lord. It, you can have a certificate indicating that you are married. But in your home you are not married. Praise the Lord. Because it was stolen and buried. They say, Acha Tone. We, have, we live in a wicked world. We live among wolves, evildoers. A child who was bright, suddenly 
he loses interest in his studies suddenly why because some evil people have taken his brain and buried it but the word of god my god says my god shall do what save me from the power of the grave whatever was buried by the enemy with the power of resurrection today it shall jump out the way lazarus jumped out of the grave praise the lord Amen. let us look at that verse i think it is 48 43 when jesus called lazarus out for, yes then jesus shouted lazarus come out again yes and lazarus came out bound in grave uh, clothes his face wrapped and his cloth and his head uh, cloth jesus told them untie him and wrap him or untie him let him go praise the lord so we see a picture of somebody who was tied down and buried that was the end this story of saying uh, she is going to get married in mequisha acha tuone she has reached 40 acha tuone she has reached, reached 50 acha tuone imekwisha but let me tell you in this house today there is a power of resurrection something is going to happen something is going to happen in your spirit something is going to happen those who said that you will never make it you will never go to the university something is going to happen when we are going to pray today we are going to ask god to release the power of resurrection the power that brought lazarus out of the tomb will bring you out of that power of the grave which had been holding you down so that you may not be able to go out and be married to go out and do what god has intended you to do Amen. praise the lord we are talking about the power of resurrection paul says i have to know him and the power of his resurrection this power is working within us praise the lord this power is at work within us it is transforming us it is giving us a new way of living this power of resurrection the moment jesus spoke listen the power of resurrection has the power to silence the voice of death and destruction. The power of resurrection. When Jesus spoke, the sickness which killed Lazarus died in his body. Praise the Lord. So the power of resurrection kills the sickness which is in the human body. The power of resurrection. When Jesus spoke, immediately, Lazarus had pain, a lot of pain. He could not breathe in and out. Then he died. He had the pain in the lungs. Let me tell you, when Jesus spoke, the path of resurrection touched him and the life of Jesus entered. It killed the sickness, the power of sickness. And it killed the power of death and destruction. You know, Lazarus was dead after four days. The body was started decomposing itself from within. There are people who have never handled dead bodies, but those of us here who have handled the dead bodies, you will know. After four days, something is happening. Something internally, the process of decay starts from within. And it had started. Can you imagine when Jesus spoke, Lazarus, come forth. The whole death died within him hallelujah death died within lazarus his condition changed his story changed those who knew him as a dead person looked at him and saw a new lazarus standing in front of them praise the lord after this prayer today your life will never be the same again whatever died in your home i'm repeating again in your home whatever died in your life the power of resurrection is coming Amen. hallelujah is coming to give it a new life because jesus is introducing himself to me to martha and say i am the resurrection 
Listen, we have two types of resurrection. Resurrection which will happen in the book of uh, First Thessalonians chapter 4. It talks about when Jesus will come to pick the church, to collect the church and take the church back to heaven. At that moment, that is the last day. But there is another resurrection which Jesus is talking about and that one is a present. Present resurrection. And he's talking about it in the book of Mark. He gave a command to his disciples. Mark chapter 8 verse, uh, chapter 10 verse 8. He gave a specific command to his disciples. He did not want people to be waiting for only one type of resurrection. Oh, I am a believer. I will go to heaven. So this one, re yes, it is, for, it is a common. That one is called common resurrection. Everybody who is a believer will, will rise from, from the dead that day. But listen to what Jesus is telling his disciples. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have also received freely. Praise the Lord. It is a command. It is a command. When Jesus introduces this new concept of resurrection, he is expecting us to act on it. That's why he came to Martha and he told her, I am the resurrection. I am. So if you believe in Jesus and Jesus is in you, you, have, you are carrying the power of resurrection this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why in the morning service we mentioned that it is not good for you to be in a, in a, a locality, in any state, and the church, there is somebody who fall, who collapses and is dying and everybody is looking for an ambulance and you are our church member you have been with us all these years and you are also the second you are trembling my friend that is the time for you to rise up in the name of Jesus to pray for that person that he shall not die but to live and testify the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let us appreciate the Lord for this. Amen. Hallelujah. So we need to get ready after this church service. Go in your instead to look around who is falling sick. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not saying go and improve, lay your hands on them. Don't be, don't be troubled. You have the power of resurrection. When people are crying, hey, he's just fallen, he's just collapsed, this and that, oh, he has sugar, all oh, this. You tell them, just wait. I will call upon the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. The problem with us believers is that sometimes we feel embarrassed. That what if I pray and it doesn't happen? My friend, if you pray and it doesn't happen, it is not your problem. Yes, you just do what you have to do as a son or a daughter of the living God. Because it is a command. The Bible says it is a command. Heal the sick. Now it is not, it, Jesus is not saying pray for the sick, praise the Lord. <laughs> it is telling, Jesus is telling you, brother Eric, heal them. Praise the Lord. Heal them. He has not given you a tablet to give them. But he said heal them. So you have to release that power. This power had been in you for many years. You have been fasting and praying. Now it is time to discharge it. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, if you are charging your phone and it is full, the battery is full. If you overcharge it, it will do what? It will be damaged. Praise the Lord. So now it is time for you to discharge during this time of coronavirus. Pray for the sick. You hear that in your apartment the neighbors got coronavirus. Pray for them. Release the power of resurrection to kill that virus in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So don't, don't be fearful also. The moment to fear, the fear, the moment fear enters you, then you destroy you, you the power of God exit from you. 
Now, this, uh, when we talk about resurrection, we speak about death. Death is a process. I remember when uh, uh, King Herod sent a man to kill, to behead John the Baptist in the prison. This man was released by the king to go and kill. That's why you need to be very careful in today's life. Why? Because the enemy comes in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10. The enemy, the devil comes to kill, to steal and to destroy. While you are sleeping and you are living carelessly, the enemy is roaring like a lion looking for whom to devour. He is roaring like a lion. So this person who had been sent to behead uh, John the Baptist, the Bible describes him as an executioner. So you need to arrest that executioner. You need to stop this executioner through prayer. You need to come out. He is possessed. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, let us look at it again. The Bible says, uh, go back to Mark 10, 8. Mark 10, 8. The Bible says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cure the, the, those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Any executioner sent by the devil, he may be a bandit, he may be a street boy with a, with a knife, a man with a knife in the night, coming against you. Listen to this. All these people who have been sent against you, or you are driving, somebody comes with a gun. Praise the Lord. Things are happening in Nairobi. But let me tell you, this word, you need to practice it. Don't be shaken. Remember the word of the Lord. That's why God brought you here. Remember the Lord in time of need. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, cast out demons. The Bible is very clear. This person is possessed by demons. That's why he is being used to kill you. Use your mouth. Use the word of God. And the Bible says, the word of God is not far from you. It is in your, it is in your mouth. It is in your heart. Praise the Lord. Some people, some people tried to use the word of God to rebuke such evildoers and nothing happened. Let me tell you why nothing happened. Let us read from the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 1 from verse 12, 14. We read from 14 and 15. Isaiah Yes, he says, I, I hate all your festivals, festivals and sacrifices. I cannot stand the sight of them. Continue. From when you lift up your hand in prayer, I will refuse to look. Even though you offer many prayers, I will not listen, for your hands are covered with the blood of your innocent victims. Praise the Lord. So we need to live a life that pleases God so that God may be closer to us. We need to have a pure hands and pure heart so that in time of need, praise the Lord. The only problem that separates us is our sins. It is our sins that separate us from God and we may call him in time of need, he is not responding. Those guys, if they've come to harm you, they will harm you. I'm telling you. They will harm you. And the Bible says uh, in the book of, uh, of uh, First Thessalonians, let us read from, uh, yes. First Thessalonians chapter 4 
to 5 and then 6. Yes. Uh, let us just go to 6 quickly. There are brothers who are still living in sins. Huh? You see, the Bible says, never cheat a Christian brother in this matter, taking his wife, for the Lord avenges all such sins. Continue. God has called us to be holy, not to live in impure lives. Praise the Lord. So if you are living in impure lives, you will call upon his name and nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. And those people who have come to harm you will do what? Will harm you. So we say that sins separate us from the presence of God. Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verse 14 to 15. Ephesians 5, 14 to 15. Yes, and where your light shine, it will be expose their evil deed. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Go down. So be careful how you live, not as a fools, but as those who are wise. Be careful how you live, not as a fools but as wise people. Be careful. In the book of 2 Kings, 2 Samuel uh, chapter uh, 33, chapter 3, verse 33, 2 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 33. We see King David lamenting during the funeral of a big general. As you know, King Saul had a big general called uh, Abner. Abner was a faithful general in the army of King Saul. But as King Saul was losing battle, and after his death, General Abner decided to go and meet King David. After they met, there was one man called General uh, Joab. Joab was a faithful general who used to serve under the leadership of King David. When uh, Joab heard that uh, Abner had come and he met David, they spoke. He realized that this man is likely to take his position. So he decided he planted the evil in his heart and he met him in the gate and he killed him in the gate. So after his death, King David was bitter, King David was sorrowful, and he cried. Can you imagine a king? We have a president here. Can you imagine the president crying at the funeral in a loud voice? King David cried in a loud voice and said, Why should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound. He cried, your hands were not bound, your feet, because he knew him as a, a, as a general, a man who has, won, who has won battles. He fought different and difficult battles and he was winning. How come now you are killed, you are dead like a fool? That's why the Bible says that do not live as fools. Be careful the way you are living because this enemy, the adversary, is roaring around as a lion, looking for whom to devour. Even if coronavirus, why should you die in sin? Praise the Lord. Why should you die in sin? Be careful. Because if you die in sin, physically, spiritually, you are already dead because you are living in sin. Now, 
that spiritual death will be manifested in the physical. The moment it is manifested in the physical, even going to heaven, you are not going. We will see uh, what happened to another Lazarus and the rich man. This is found in the book. Let us look at, look at it quickly from the book of, uh, of Luke chapter 16 from verse 19. Luke 16 verse 19. There was a certain rich man who was very rich and uh, another person called Lazarus. Lazarus was a poor man who did not have enough food. He could stay and sit at, in the gate of this rich man. Whatever was left over from the table of the rich man was given to Lazarus. He was just waiting in the gate. He was a beggar. But a beggar who fears God, a beggar who decided not to change his conditions. Do you think that God was pleased with him? No. Maybe somebody stole his star. Maybe somebody buried his talent. Maybe somebody bewitched him. Praise the Lord. It is not in vain that the Bible says that God shall deliver me from the power of the grave. Psalm 49 uh, verse 15. My God shall deliver me from the power of the grave. When a child who was bright and now is being insulted by the teachers because they, they, they put in high level of effort to help him to succeed and he's not succeeding. Someone who was successful after going to the village he helped somebody in the village the moment he gave that money, he came back to Nairobi, he's just losing everything. Are you getting it? So, these kind of things exist. But to reverse that, you need the power of resurrection. Praise the Lord. Whatever was buried needs the power of resurrection. This Lazarus was living a miserable life, but he was fearing God. At least he made it to heaven. The rich man died. Let us read it. The rich man died and he was buried. When he was buried, he was taken to a place of torment. But when this Lazarus died, he was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. You see the difference? So this is the, 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 the resurrection of the last days. Jesus was showing us the picture of the last days. What will happen? Praise the Lord. So, be a good person. Be careful as to how you are living. And do not die like a fool dies. A fool today is someone who has heard all this gospel all these years. He's not careful. Then when the attack comes, we are not talking only this attack of physical, when physical attacks, when somebody comes with a gun or a knife and wants to kill you. We don't talk only about that. It can also happen that somebody has come, Muganga, he comes because your, your business is disturbing their business. And then they consulted and they paid him to be with you. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Praise the Lord. But for that scripture to be fulfilled in your life, you need to be very careful as to how you live. Praise the Lord. You need to be careful. How do you live? Because if you are living carelessly, you will pray prayers. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. But God in heaven is saying, I'm not looking. I'm not listening. Praise the Lord. But there are people that, whom the devil has blinded they say, no, we are living under grace. You know, this is the time of grace. They do anything. We are under the grace. We are under the grace. My friend, if God is not with you, it is like a policeman on a mission. Then he sees thieves. He calls his boss 
to send the, uh, to, uh, the reinforcement, to send more policemen. He's calling on his boss is not picking the call. And the thieves are advancing. <laughs> and thieves are advancing. So you need to be connected, praise the Lord, permanently. It is not that you are connected only when you are in church. When you reach home, you are totally disconnected from heaven. Be, let us be careful during this season. This season is a very sensitive season of our lives. Because there are sicknesses and disease. On the top of what you had as problems, now we have coronavirus with its implications. So if you are disconnected from heaven, King David says, my help will come from heaven. From God who made heaven and earth. This God is a good God, but when there is a sin between you and him, you are totally separated from him. Because you are separated from him, you will be disappointed. And people will say, how come he, he was killed and he was kneeling down and he's, we heard him shouting Jesus and nothing happened. People will be questioning, we don't, you know. No, because you are disconnected. Praise the Lord. So, from this church service, we are requesting you to, uh, to be connected. Reconnected to heaven. Be reconnected to heaven. You will experience the power of resurrection. Now, in God has fixed a time for each and every one of us to repent. In the book of Zephaniah chapter 2, 1 and 2, we will, uh, we will we are getting ready to pray. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1, gather together and pray. You shameless nation, continue. Gather while there is still time before judgment begins and your opportunity is blown away like a chaff. Act now before the fierce fury of the Lord falls and the terrible day of the Lord's anger begins. Praise the Lord. God has prepared a time, a time for each and every one of us to repent. And the Bible says, Act now. When Jesus talks, He talks about now. He was telling Martha, I am the resurrection now. Not that we are waiting for that one which will come. No, he's now, 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 now. That's why Jesus says, heal the sick when? Now. Cast the demons when? Now. He raised the dead? Now. Praise the Lord. Don't say, no, God, you know, <laughs> you make a gentleman prayer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this person is dead. So, you know, God will raise him. <laughs> you are giving excuses why you should not pray for that person to rise from the dead. It is, it, it, it is because of fear. It is because of doubt. What if? What if? What if? What if? You know, there was a, a day Jesus was called to pray for a daughter of somebody and uh, the daughter died. Jairus. And do you know what Jesus did? He took Peter and John. Praise the Lord. He took two. People who will not question. People who will not stop him as he's praying. Praise the Lord. In some cases, you don't have to carry everybody. Praise the Lord. In some cases, you don't have to bring everybody. When somebody is in a critical condition, be very careful. Whom are you bringing there? Praise the Lord. The Bible says, who is in here, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. When somebody is in a critical condition, don't bring people who are double-minded. Who have come to look at what is happening. Peter never questioned, what if you pray and it doesn't happen? <laughs> so we need to know whom are we taking when there is a critical condition. 
Be very careful. Jesus had the 12 disciples and they brought in, we brought in only two. Our wengine say mubaki apo inje. Stay outside. Because he knew that with this kind of cases, we need people who, who don't question what God is going to do. Who are firm in their faith and who expect a miracle to take place. Praise the Lord. The power of resurrection. So let us uh, rise up on our feet. Because I can see we, we need to pray. Jesus says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. And when they used to go to Jerusalem, they used to go to pray. And there was a, 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 a crippled person uh, who used to sit at the gate, called the beautiful gate, who was healed at the time of prayer. So there is a healing power in this house because it is a command of the Lord who says, heal the sick. Hallelujah. It is a command. He has commanded us. It is not my word. It is his word. He is going to honor his word. But when we read this scripture, before we pray, this scripture will take us through a, a moment of repentance. First the Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4, we will read uh, 6 and 8, then we pray. 6 and 8. To summarize, the Bible says that God avenges all such sins God avenges all such sins maybe when you are ignorant you could take advantage of weak people because they don't have strength they don't have power to take you to court maybe it is a house girl maybe your secretary because they don't have your capacity. But now that you are in the Lord, you still continue in the same evil way. It is called iniquity. Verse 8 says, And anyone who refuses is rejecting God who gives his Holy Spirit. If today you are in this house, You've heard all that you have preached, but you refuse. You refuse the word of God. You go back to your old ways. The Bible says eight, but you are rejecting God who gives his Holy Spirit. Don't reject the word of God you've heard from this pulpit. Don't reject the word of God that you've heard from this pulpit today because somebody may say him is just talking but he doesn't know what I feel in my body God is concerned about you and he wants you to be totally freed from the power of death and destruction you know that power can be an arrow of the devil fired into your life so that at the end of the day you may attract the anger of God that I will sing this chorus that created me a clean heart. Created me a clean heart. That God may come and forgive us and forget all our sins and give us a newness of life through the power of resurrection. Let us sing that chorus and we pray.
blessing is precious blood. And that is the blood covenant of his son Jesus. Jesus who died on the cross to, to free us from the bondage of darkness. We are going to request him to wash us in the blood of Jesus. To forgive us and to give us a pure heart. A clean heart. A heart that obeys. So that the powerful resurrection may be able to move through us. In Jesus name, let us pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We thank you. We give you glory. We thank you. We give you honor. We thank you, Lord, for the power and the blood covenant of Jesus who died to free us from the body of darkness. Forgive us, Lord. Wash us in your blood. Wash me in your blood. Wash your church in the blood. Forgive us, Lord, for this day. We need your mercy. We need your mercy. We need your mercy. We need your mercy.
ascent. We are going through hard time. Let us pray that God, listen, let us tell God, God, separate me from the iniquity of another man, the iniquity of my parents, the iniquity of my grandparents. Separate me. We are not using a scripture from Old Testament. We are using the same scripture here. Can you put it back? Because somebody in his heart may say, if that was in the Old Testament. When it happened, and now that you are in the Lord, God forgives. You need to plead for mercy. Yourself to be separated from that iniquity. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Six, eight, eight, verse eight. Yes. Lord avenges all such sins. So we are going to ask God, my God, separate me, separate me, separate me from the iniquity of another person. Separate me because you are a different person. You are born again. Why should you suffer? Because of your parents. Because of your grandparents who did evil in the eyes of God. Who did exactly what the Bible says they should not do. Because God is true to his word. So let us pray and ask God to separate us. Then when we pray for the power of healing, it will just come instantly. Father, we've heard your word. That you are God who avenges all such sins. We are coming from different families. And our parents did not know you the way we know you. They committed abomination. They did many bad things. And now we are standing before you this day. And asking you know, to separate us from the iniquities of our parents. From the iniquities of our grandparents. Through the blood covenant of Jesus. Free us this day. From that pain, from that problem, from that infirmity, from that sickness, have mercy, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, free us, Lord. Free me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. And now, if you are sick in your body, just lay your hands where you are feeling pain. We are going to pray for the power of resurrection to come down and touch you. Remember, when Lazarus was in the tomb, he was in the tomb because he died. He died because he was sick. But when the power of resurrection came, it canceled the power of sickness, it canceled the power of death and destruction, and he jumped out of the grave. Praise the Lord. So we are going to ask the power of resurrection to come upon us, to come upon our children, to come upon our project which have died, to come upon our jobs, our businesses which have died. We are going to call upon the power of resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Pray from wherever you are. As you lay your hands, where you are feeling pain. Father, through the blood covenant of Jesus, we come before you like this. We come and pray that you may stretch out your hand of miracle, your hand of deliverance upon this church, the hand of a miracle to release the power of resurrection, the power that brought Jesus back to life. We need to experience that power today because when it came upon Lazarus, Lazarus came out of the tomb. That power which killed him had no power over him. Oh God, arise and release the power of resurrection today to heal the sick, to restore everything that the enemy had killed in our lives. In the name of Jesus, our project here in the world of the Lord, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, any part of our body that the enemy had destroyed, that the enemy had turned upside down in order to bring conflict to our bodies, we command you now to be restored in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Lord, release your healing power. Move in our church. Move, oh God. Touch and heal the sick. Touch and heal the sick. Touch and heal the sick. In the name of Jesus, we won't say.
God, you will be glorified. Be exalted, Lord. For you alone are God of miracles. We thank you for the power of resurrection. The power to resurrect. The power to give back life to anything that was dead in your life. We thank you because our God have regained new life. Hallelujah. We thank you because our projects are brought back to life. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. upon you. May God keep you safe and secure throughout this week. May God's goodness, love and mercy be upon your life. In this week, may God grant you victory. May his healing take effect in your body completely in Jesus' name. And may his loving kindness protect you in Jesus' name. Thank you, uh, Elder Mamba, for that word. I believe it shall have its rightful working in our lives and in our hearts in Jesus' name. Now we want to wind up this service with a grace. And um, uh, as you go out, please ensure you sanitize. And God bless you for finding time to come and worship with us this day. And for those who are watching from home, thank you for... Um, finding time to just tune in and be part and parcel of what God is doing. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Please, our visitors, um, uh, I will pray good to meet with them. At